Hello learners, welcome to NIOS studio. I am Dr. Sona Ahuja, Associate Professor. We will talk about mathematics assessment in NCA. In this talk, we would try to address what is NCF? What are the guidelines of NCF related to mathematics assessment? So let's see first what is NCF. NCF is the National Curriculum Framework which was framed in 2005 and which is one of the four National Curriculum Frameworks published in 1975, 1988, 2000 and 2005 by the National Council of Educational Research and Training NCERT. It gives us the details and the outline of the framework for the school and for the teacher education. So let's see what implications NCF has for mathematics assessment. The guiding principles are that assessment should be such that it connects knowledge to life outside the school. So if the learner knows the concepts, if he scores full out of full marks, but what if he is not able to apply this knowledge in real life? So for example, you have taught them area of four walls. So they know the formula of area of four walls. In the given question, they can find out the values, identify the values, place the values in the formula, do the mathematical operations and find out the answer, area of the four walls. But when in the real life, let's see if we give them a model of a room and then we ask them to find out the area of the four walls. They are not able to. That means they are not able to connect the knowledge outside the school. So the guiding principles of NCF states that the student should be able to connect knowledge of life outside school and assessment should be such that it tests or it assesses this ability of the learner. Let's see what is the next principle. It says that ensuring the learning is shifted away from the rote methods. So student not only is able to cram the formula, reproduce the formula when asked, but is actually able to apply the formula in the different related situations. So what if student knows that the formula of profit and loss is this, or this is the formula for profit percentage, but when given a situation, he is not able to find out the solution using that formula. That means this reflects his rote learning, which has come from the rote methods. So learning is to be shifted from rote, rote methods to the real life learning, to the application of the concepts in the real life. And this is the next guiding principles of NCF for assessment of mathematics learning. The next one is making examination more flexible and non-threatening. Exams should be user friendly, should be student friendly. We should not take exams so as to create fear in students, but to give them the feedback on their performance. Do you remember what ideas you came into your mind when you think about exams long time back? Or say for now, at times there is an adrenaline rush when we think about exams. At times we get nervous when we think about exams. For many, the exam word itself is the source of fear. So this is because examination has not been taken in the real sense. Examination should not be threatening. It is not meant to fear the student from something. It should encourage the right kind of learning. It should give feedback to the student. And this is what is the guiding principle of NCF that examinations have to be non-threatening. And by flexible, it means that it should not be very rigid. We should change the patterns according to the potentialities of the learners. The next principle is primacy to children's experience and participation. How to assess different learning experiences 
of the learner. That should be the objective of the assessment and how to make it more participatory. So entire teaching learning experience and evaluation should be based on the learner. It should be learner centered. The student should actively participate in the entire procedure. This is what this principle states. The next is student and the active learner. So student should not be just the passive receiver of the knowledge, but he should be the creator. Education itself is derived from the word E plus duco, which means taking inside out. So it already exists in the learner. By changing his potential energy to kinetic energy, you have to make him active and make him learn rather than just keep, keep on giving the lectures. The next is you should relate the learning to the immediate, immediate environment that is to the objects which they are actually going to deal with to the situations which are they are actually going to deal with. They should be able to apply the concepts of mathematics in that immediate environment and this should be assessed. This should be reflected in the assessment patterns also. The types of questions or the types of assessment tools should be based on the immediate environment. The next principle is examinations for short durations are preferred instead of at the end three hour examinations. Like the traditional examination pattern is assess your learner at the end for three hours. So whatever he is able to perform determines his performance. So this is not the right way and this can be threatening to students and make him nervous. So make exams of shorter duration, have different types of exams like you can have quizzes, 10 minutes quizzes, 5 minutes assignments, questions in the classroom which can last for 2 minutes or just 1 minute. So examination not only means examination at the end of the course but during the course and thus it can be made of shorter duration if we use the variety of tools. Then there should be flexible time limit if the learner's pace to learn is slow then we should make the assessment time limit accordingly. The duration during the assessment or the examination should depend on the potentialities of the learner. Then the primary purpose of evaluation in classroom is feedback for both student and teacher. So when we evaluate the learner should know what are his areas of weaknesses, the learner should know where he is exactly at in the learning situation and thus he should get the feedback from the assessment of mathematics learning. Also, a teacher should know which topics need, needs to be retaught, which topics she needs to change these instructional strategies for. So, the assessment should also be feedback for the teacher. Next principle is there should be shift from content based testing to problem solving and competency based assessment. That is, we should not assess only the content knowledge of the learner, but if he is actually able to apply the content in solving the problems. Does it actually develop the competency to solve the problems or higher level of thinking, higher order thinking in the students? So learners at the end try to answer these questions. What is NCF? What are the guiding principles of NCS for assessment of mathematics learning? And how does it differentiate the assessment of mathematics learning from the traditional learning? What will be the limitations of the system if we do not adopt the principles of NCF for assessment of mathematics learning? How the principles of NCF make the assessment of mathematics learning learner-centered? Thank you.